just got up. Um, anyway, response video to the modern mystic who has called me on a choice of words. <laughs> a choice of words. <laughs> um, so yes, this word choice, I'm going to try to avoid it. Um, try to find some other replacement word because you don't choose. You know, it's, you just don't. <laughs> okay, you will decide. Your brain will do. I mean, it will do based on a sequence of events that we don't have any control over in any real way. Um, that's determinism. It's just the way it is. This is a process that we've gone through. We're programmed devices, just like this computer, will do what it will do. And it's set up to do it. Okay, what it's doing right this second. It was set up to do it right this second, and it can't do anything else, and that's just the way it is. We're the same way. And he knows I know that. Um, and it's good that he calls me on the words, and I've asked, I've even, I even said it in a video, that I'm going to make mistakes in videos, and it's okay to call me on it, because we do have to fix this language problem. And there is a language problem. We have lots of words in our vocabulary that we use commonly that aren't accurate. So we shouldn't use them. So I should have said something. Instead of saying, you could choose to run the old lady over or choose to help her across the street, I should have said, um, you'll be persuaded to, or you'll be inclined to, or... Um, something, some other language, um, you know, you'll be compelled, you'll be, uh, you know, something to indicate that you have to be structurally in the mood <laughs> to run her over or help her across the street. Um, and the only argument to this futility argument that I'm making is that, yes, my Everything's already futile in the sense I can't really change anything. But the, as the modern mystic pointed out, we don't have predictive power yet. So from our position in this rigid bumpity 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 that we're on, um, we can't see it. Um, so he held up a CD as, as, a, as the example. You know, I can probably show that. Um, and, um, you know... Telling Karen. It's it's a it's a nice you know metaphor y kind of thingy, but it in a sense doesn't really explain how this actually works, in the sense that it's more like an old piece of vinyl and the record just keeps playing over itself and it keeps putting marks on the record as it's playing over itself. It's recording as it's playing, in a sense. And so the bumps of the past be become bumps in the future and become in the present, and then, you know, they're red in the in the present, and then they're, these new bumps will be red in the future, essentially. So it's more like a device that just keeps recording on itself. Um, it's like a ball bouncing around and around and around and, and creating deficits, and it just keeps hitting those deficits from the past and changing the angle of its bounce as it's playing the game as it's rolling through time. But obviously the future isn't here yet. But it's inevitable where the ball will bounce. It's going to happen. Um, but obviously as individuals in the bouncing present, we don't know who we're going to persuade. We don't know how we're going to impact people. There's like magic words, so to speak. Okay, that will open the sesame door, like the open sesame door. And if we do say those words, we will alter the programming of other people. Doors will open, so to speak, and the ball will bounce differently off of them now because of how we've impacted them. So we are, the ball's bouncing, but we are part of the bouncing ball. We won't make a spontaneous decision to change them. They won't be spontaneously changed. It all has to happen through us. And that's all I meant by, from our perspective, futility is not an option. Because I can't possibly know whether the right thing for me to do 
is go out and start shooting everybody or <laughs> go out and help old ladies across the street or sit here and just say open sesame open sesame open sesame open sesame or you know I just can't know I can't I'm not provided the evidence of which road to take from my current position I can't know what compulsion or what idea or what thought is the right thought so from my perspective I'm still limited to only these past bumps I don't get the insight of knowledge of the future bumps to sit there and be able to say ah I see everything's going to be fine let's just ride the ride you know instead I have I'm stuck in the ignorance of the present um, and brain wheels and deals and has to wheel and deal I have to go through the angst and the emotion and the the crap because that's part of the determinism that will get me to saying open sesame or get me to drinking a cup of coffee and the door never opens and everything goes wrong and I get cancer and die futilely I mean I'm either going <laughs> to I'm either going to be successful or unsuccessful in my ambition and you know just just like an Olympic event you know the going in it's already decided who's going to win they're the shit that's going to happen to them is going to happen to them uh, some woman's going to have her period and you know lose the race or something it's going to happen and it's determined but they can't know it going in you know they have no knowledge to guaranteed knowledge of any of these little idiotic circumstances it's going to dictate like you know my ski pole is two years old and I should have took a new one because it you know cracked in the middle of my event and fucked me you know whatever the thing would be can't know it ahead of time I have to play the game from this position of ignorance so I'm not discounting determinism I'm just in in saying that I mean all I had to do was change the words a little I will either persuade you to run the old lady over or help her across the street or I could have said somebody else could have done the persuading but the point is you will be impacted in such a way to be in the psychological position the mental position of either inclined to help the old lady across the street or inclined to run her over and um, that's why our existence is still vital in a sense that we don't know what the outcome is going to be and we don't know whether we're fundamentally necessary to the outcome whether depending on how we are inclined whether we run over the old lady or help her across the street whether this will affect the future so that's my only argument here is that futility in a circumstance of ignorance or uncertainty can't really be argued as an option in terms of I can do nothing or nothing won't matter or whatever I do the outcome would be the same because obviously it wouldn't be the same no matter what the outcome whatever I do but what I will do is determined and it will be determined by what I understand and what bumps I have and how rotten my ski pole is so whether I win the gold medal and do the right thing and convince everybody and do everything right will depend on a lot of circumstances primarily my own but whatever that will compel me to either say open sesame and get the magic words right or get the magic wrong words wrong and these people aren't persuaded and they still act like assholes and they still talk shit and yeah the whole thing spirals into the toilet I mean this is the the idiocy here is that what I do might just be I could be the muse for a Martin Luther King we could argue that Martin Luther King's seven years old and somebody could inspire him to be a crusader or somebody could inspire him to knit interesting little things or something and these two this event of persuasion would change the future but obviously the future the past was written too solid by solid events that couldn't be changed 
but the fact is is we can imagine that they can be altered and we can imagine it's part of our imagination is going to be part of our programming and what we're capable of imagining will be part of the programming that will dictate our behavior so in a sense I have to have the possibility of having been enlightened just to have some sense that I can say open sesame I have some knowledge that the door will open if I do say the magic words that knowledge alone has changed destiny in a sense that it makes me capable of at least standing in front of the door going you know saying all kinds of shit to try to get the door to open I wouldn't have been able to do that without some knowledge and you know previous programming so I don't want to beat this to death but determinism is a subject you know you have to you have to talk about it very delicately very very delicate subject because yeah you use a few wrong words you say something with the wrong emphasis or too sloppily and and um you break in concept what's really happening um and so clearly it's explicitly deterministic but part of the determinism is memes part of the determinism is conversation part of the determinism is emphasis somebody says it the right way I have a dream and the actual tear has to come down the face uh, you know there, there has to be the actual you know somebody has to actually film it you know does the you know, people understand the candy assassination completely differently than they would understand if it wasn't for the existence of the Zabruder film. So if that film of Kennedy having his head blown off didn't exist, just imagine the speculation that would be going on. <laughs> you know, if the film didn't exist. You know, people are wacky in their speculation as it is, but, you know, the film at least cut some of that down. You know, imagine if they hadn't invented good cameras before we landed on the moon. You know, people might be, oh yeah, sure, they say that we landed on the moon. You know, you, you, you get it? I mean, there's, <clears throat> you know, the, the swirl, is, it's more complicated than just saying it's all deterministic and we can all just not swirl. You know, that, that what the world will be isn't depending on us first inventing cameras <laughs> or, you know, understanding that we can say the magic words potentially are some other thing it's like that it's not dependent on our knowledge that it's not dependent on us emoting that it's not depending on us persuading that it's not dependent on us impacting these are all things that will change what happens these are all things change see again use the damn word these are all things that are part of the deterministic end they are constituents to it. They're necessary components to it. The future will not be that future if you don't have that thought previous to that future kind of thing. So that's the argument here is that we have to do all of this stuff in a current circumstance of ignorance of the future so we can't already know we failed or we can't already know we succeeded. We can't know that. We can't know the path, we have to actually go through the process of deciding, um, you know, and that's always going to be difficult. And I would argue that for it to be fundamentally worth anything, you have to under you have to, you have to think, <laughs> okay, it does matter. If you don't think it matters, you probably won't do anything that matters you probably already broke in a sense your brain was already broken out of relevancy to having a constructive impact because you disengaged through some notion that you weren't necessary that you didn't have to jump in front of it you didn't have to jump on any grenades to impact the future <sighs> yeah so, look, the danger here is that we do have the capacity to imagine different futures based on different decisions. And we can model them and say, oh, okay, I understand that. 
and I suppose that I could we could argue both we could agree that if we see if we saw certain signs from the economy certain things happening we could predict certain things like a crash or something else we could see the run on the bank and we could know what the implications of that are so there's there's signals that can say okay we now have a certainty about what the future is and now we can do something by programming to compensate or take advantage of or blah 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 so in a sense we see it all the time that although it's determined from our perspective we can't understand it as determined because it's not from our perspective we don't see the end so we have to go through this mental process of looking and analyzing and feeling and reacting because we're part of the presence putting the proper bumps on the record so that when it comes around again it'll bump right or wrong depending on what we did okay um, <clears throat> so I probably haven't done a perfect job of of doing this see this implies the CD thingy and we're here on the CD it doesn't explain the writing and, and the writing is this processing you have to put us on the CD you have to put this moment as a as a non-spontaneous previously created bumping a, a, we're the echo of the past, you know, marking the present, deciding the future. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, um, but yeah, I'm going to try to just, I'm just going to, I'm, I have a program running, brain, that's looking for the words, the magic stupid words, like choice, <laughs> you know. And it is trying to say, don't say that. Um, so, but, you know, that always takes a while. Just like, you know, I still say things like, oh, and um, what, what was the one I said all the time? Like or something, right? Well, anyway. Anyway. I, you know, I say that too much. So, obviously, these programs, these filtering programs where you have a, a desire and a notion to do something inside your brain don't work very well <laughs> so I can't guarantee it'll never slip out of my mouth again but I'll try um, and um, okay on you for noticing it okay on you for bringing it up I suppose uh, I suppose it just seems like a, a, a bad transition in conversation from my perspective because again I'm trying brain is motivated and concentrating on the fact that if I throw my impacts you know my whatever I have as energy at other people and dent them I can dent them into helping the old lady cross the street instead of running her over and maybe one of them now will say the magic words that will open the door kind of thing and determinism doesn't help me in any way okay and knowing that I already have done it essentially I will robotically go through this process I'm robotically making this video even though none of it feels robotic and none of it seems robotic it is robotic it's programmed gibberish but the fact is this programmed gibberish will impact other people and then they'll do different programmed gibberish because of it so f again from my perspective I can't brain would be stupid not to sense feel think say something else instead you know say it better say if it didn't say those things it wouldn't be functioning properly 
it should feel, it should want <laughs> these words to be more perfect. These words to do what they have to do. Accomplish the task that I know needs to be part of one of these little rings. Somewhere in one of these rings, people have to get the have to get a clue. And I'm saying I'm I'm trying to be a previous bunch of shit that will compel them to do the right shit in the future, so the right shit happens in the next in, in the even more distant future. I'm. I'm deliberately and willfully trying to seed the the frickin' future with the right present reaction to eh, past information. And as I've stated before, there is a progression. You, you do learn how to make a camera and then take pictures. And the world changes based on the lumpity bumpity behavior of the of the beasties changes in the sense that it's different than it was in the past and the future will be different than it is in the pez present but it will only be different because we do our inventing because we do our work because we do our shit that is necessary to the shit that will be the future Look, the simple bottom line is, is I can imagine the world in the future, and I can imagine the world that would have existed, or I can imagine probabilistically, or with some sort of reason, that the world would be different if Martin Luther King existed, or if he didn't exist. That the world would be different depending on who won gold medals. That the world would be different depending on who won a presidential election that it wouldn't be the same future, that it would be changed because different magic words would have been said and put on a building and different behaviors would have taken place and different people would have lived and different people would have died. And those facts mean that the future would have different bumps on it. I can imagine it. Obviously I can't change the past. I can't change the present. So the future will be because I can't access that either. <laughs> yeah. But I am cog. I am wheel in gear work. My wheel is going to matter. And my wheel experiences turning in, in a world that I can't know. In, in a way where I have to make what I think are decisions. What brain contemplates as decisions, what brain angst is, is, is over as decisions. I, I'll have to do it in the present, in a circumstance where I'll have to know it matters for me to worry, which may be very necessary to me taking it seriously and thinking more or doing that will make the difference in terms of the quality or the usefulness uh, or the effectiveness of any impact or persuasion uh, impact, persuasion impact I might have on other people's programming. If I don't take it seriously, if I don't experience it as serious it may well be likely that that's what was missing <laughs> okay and that's why the future is going to suck hmm? kind of thing all right i i really didn't want to go this long but it you know this is a gnarly subject to bring up in the middle of a conversation about um you know what what is the standard of evidence for conviction, which I think is the subject we were previously on, where we can convict silly Pyrrho notions and silly to-be-serious notions of being silly notions, and we can convict serious Gary arguments about 
the fundamental nature of life as being serious facts because they are every single little piece of reasonable evidence supports them and should carry them through the past into the future. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, thanks for the video, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I you know I have to react to it in just this present moment. It is like oh geez, a little bit of nitpicky, but you know whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was my bad. Choice is a stupid word. Decision is a little bit fudgy too. I don't really like that one either. So persuasion. Um, Maybe we can come up with a good word for when your programming has changed. You know, reprogrammed. Let's see, that, that, that implies that we did it over <laughs> and you can't do it over. So that doesn't really work either. Um, but I, 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 you have to, I would hope you would, maybe you won't concede this. Uh, um, you know, that we're, That that we we have to we we can't just say, oh the future's already written. I'll go take a nap. You know I can't change anything, so I'll go take a nap. That obviously that would be counterproductive to recognizing the gear worky thing, and that you've already guaranteed failure if you say, oh the war's already over. I won't fight in it. And the truth was, if you fought in it, you they would have won the war. You know I mean this is the reality here. So you. You know what you what notions you have in your head do matter, and even though you're going to decide inevitably, the process of decision has no appearance of inevitability. Obviously, when you're sitting here, you don't know it. You know you have no idea. I mean, I can sit on the diving board over the water in the pool. And while I'm angsting over jumping in, clearly I'm going to jump in. Clearly the future has that written somewhere. But from my position, I don't know that. I don't know that it's going to happen in 3 seconds or 10 seconds or 15 seconds. You know. So at the moment, I'm still saying I'm deciding, even if I'm not. I mean, my brain is processing. Yeah. But that doesn't sound as good as I'm deciding. My brain is processing. But it's okay. I mean that. But that's how the language has to change. That's that I'll agree. If that's what you're saying, if you could agree, that we have to change the way we use words, to make, to, to say this more accurately. But I wish you would concede that even in that, there's a certain logical problem of disengaging people from their function if the words aren't said right and you somehow imply that people don't have to fight in wars anymore and they're still going to win them because that would be stupid <laughs> right that that would be idiotic right to say oh we're going to win the war anyway and then nobody fights in it yeah see that would be illogical so somebody's still going to have to somehow be motivated to fight in a war they think we already won. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm just saying, that's the catch-22 of this conversation. Okay. Now it's enough. Okay, I feel better now that I've sewn that up. And such.